Hello chat, welcome Mushroomelian and Faye Magpie. It's always good to have you here. Um, Hello, Fee Gates. What? <laughs> I said hello, what's up in German? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we've got the ad break. After the ad break, we'll start. Welcome, Sikari. Welcome, ad break. Mouse says, Mothet is not clear to me, so maybe you can clarify. Where do the residents line up morally? Mouse, I don't know if you're going to be pleased or sad to hear this, but they're, they're evil. The residents are evil. They've been evil ever since, wait, when did the first one come out? Hang on, I'm Google. It's got to be like the 90s, remember. right? Oh, most definitely the 90s. It's a PlayStation 1 era. I don't know things. Faye Magpie says, are the residents biohazardous? Yes, they are biohazardous. Huh. That's, oh, that's the director's cut. When did the original come out? 1996, okay. God, I'm as old as Resident Evil. I'm younger than Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I, I'm oh, no. so sorry for your loss, Mushroomelian. Yeah, unfortunately, Mouse, I, I have to confirm they are biohazards. This all started with Big Pharma, and it's ending now with fungus. Damn, I can't believe it started with Big Pharma. And it's still with fungus, but this time it's like spiritual fungus? I don't know what Village's deal is. We'll find out when we're done here today, because this should be the last one. Yeah. Kind of like Mushi, except miles more evil. Villages deal is generational trauma. <laughs> so true, actually. <laughs> I think everything is generational trauma when you get down to it. Yeah. Looks directly at Devil May Cry. I should play Devil May Cry. You should play Devil May Cry. I'm the world's number one Devil May Cry advocate. Oh man, speaking of other games, Sieves and I have been playing um, Chaos Head Noah, which is definitely a game that exists. Um, and uh, <laughs> the protagonist is the most like terminally online sad sack you've ever seen in your life i was reading your info dump in uh i'm not um, omnipolis mm -hmm. while i was going to bed last night yeah no i just he's he's so frustrating uh <laughs> but he he gets better over the course of the story but like you can see the sharp drop of where people like encounter him and go Hmm. No, I'm going to like myself and leave. Um, but but we kept going. Um, and it turns out I I spent like the whole time we just finished route one, and I spent the whole time going. But does he need to be that bad at the beginning? Like, can't he be a little less abrasive? You're turning a lot of people off the story that I think would otherwise enjoy it. Um, we got to the end of route one, and I'm very emotioned to tell you that yes, he does need to be that abrasive. The entire story uh, falls apart if he is less abrasive at the beginning. I see. This is why the visual novel is the peak form of storytelling. Well, gee, it's almost like a visual novel is a book. Thank you, Faye Magpie. Uh, visual novels are like a book, but not exactly. They're, they're like a book, but with extra steps. 
They are like a book, but with extra steps. I would definitely rather play a visual novel than read a book, but also both are boring to me. I think, I think they both have strong points. I think there's things that each of them can do that the other can't. But, hmm. uh... I, I like them. I think... I feel like visual novels are part of what... They're like the, um... Evolution from illustration. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't mean that illustration is bad, it just means that we've got two cool things now instead of one cool thing. Anyway. True. The ad ended a while back and I didn't notice. <laughs> Mouse says, Simplifying visual novels or books to the other defeats the purpose of differentiated media. I mean, you're right, but I'm saying that they're siblings. And they're one is a younger sibling. Siblings. One has to be a younger sibling because books have been around since, like, the BC times. Um, they're definitely more similar to each other than either is to, like, movies or to some other types of games. Um, so they're, they're siblings. They are not the same. They are not each other in a funny hat, but they are siblings. Anyway. Why is it saying this? Didn't we save last time? We're right here. Okay, that's weird. Um, I mean, we got we got put back a ways because we gave up. That is true. Uh, fortunately, it seems Tickery is doing much better. Oh yeah, Tickery seems much better. Um, uh, if anyone was here for the uh, disastrous last Resident Evil stream, um, I had Seeps come over and take a look at my computer, and it turns out that she ate a bunch of hair, and now. Um, we have told her very gently, like, don't do that, uh, and she seems to be doing better. And by told her very gently to not do that, I mean we, like, put her somewhere where it's less likely to happen. Yeah, my computer had a hairball. <laughs> anyway, Coda says this is probably the last Resident Evil 7 stream. Almost definitely. The Mines is the final stream. Uh, be prepared for a lot of guys to just appear. Yes. And also mines. Uh, Faye says she still won't play Control with me. Faye, listen. Okay, I, I actually looked this up after the last stream. People on ProtonDB do report performance issues on Linux. And they have provided solutions for this. And I need to test the solutions. But once I have tested the solutions, we should be able to play Control. <laughs> Uh, don't forget. You got triple iron mines. See. It is also at this point that boxes can explode in your face again, so be careful. I thought you said it was like right after this point. Uh, no, it's uh, there's two places in the game where boxes will theoretically explode. That is Lucas's area and the mines. The music is playing like there's a guy. The music sure is playing like there's a guy. There oh, it is. Guy. Yeah, that one you're gonna have to fight. <laughs> Getting real good at those headshots. They says someday we won't have to have controlled streams that are actually Nancy Drew streams. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing headshots. I don't hear any ticking. That one should be good.
no ticking. Mouse says, I have begun to grow fond of the stealth Nancy Drew streams, though. <laughs> Um, well, one, there's something wrong with you, but two, so am I, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is much smoother. So much smoother. Hey, we have 69 bullets. Nice. Nice. And this will be a point of no return. I think you have everything. <sighs> yeah. Ethan will not learn how to vault until he visits a village in uh, rural Europe. Oh god, this is where there was a bunch of, like, stuff coming from behind me no matter where I look. Right? Yeah. I will Remote take bombs these. are fortunately your friend. Yes. I would check out down there first, probably. Yes. Uh, never mind, there's nothing there. But we were just in there. That's what I'm saying! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> this is why Might I turned time. around, because I remembered this. Yeah. <laughs> Might be time what? Might be time to pull out Old Reliable. Which one's Old Reliable? The Boomstick. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, shit. That's not what I meant to do. Other <laughs> one, other one. I mean, they're both Boomsticks. <laughs> this is true. One's just a lot more boom. And the other's a lot more stick. We aren't actually doing too bad on health. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> Mushroom Alien says, listen, for me, anything is better than watching more Supernatural. <laughs> the only thing I know about Supernatural is there's an angel named Castiel, and there was this crossover with Scooby-Doo. God. Um, so when I was in 8th grade, I had, like, an hour commute both ways, uh, and so what I'd do was I would load up Supernatural episodes and I'd watch them in the car, um, mm. and I think that this is the objectively correct way to watch Supernatural. Koda, all you need to know about Supernatural is they did a crossover with Scooby-Doo, I think. <laughs> No, that was real. I didn't watch the episode yet, but I know it was real. A man. Shit. Oh, fuck. Another man. Not dead yet. Now dead. Faye says, Supernatural led to a lot of extremely well-written fanfiction, so just read a list of characters and then go read fanfic. It means I have to read. Uh, and Sikari says, All I know about Supernatural is that Dean and Castiel are my news anchors now. <laughs> Huh. That's a lot of salt. Where am I supposed to be going? Push the minecart and find oh. out. Oh. <gasps> Yay! Progress! A progress? 
I like that you did that in the Sonic voice. It's, yeah, generally my default protagonist voice. Okay, we've got two ways to go. One way, I think, is... Mm, One yeah, way that's is a nothing. dead end. I'm gonna make sure. Sikari says... Mold creatures. Sikari says, I wouldn't think mold creatures would do so well in salt mines. Well, somebody didn't uh, look at the, uh, the, uh, fucking Chris DLC. <laughs> Where the mold becomes salt. What? I don't think it's supposed <laughs> to do that. Listen, 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 listen. Guys, guys, if you are ever in Poland, go to the Wieliczka salt mines. Because those things fuck. Uh, up or down first? Um, I'd say probably see if there's anything on the down first, because you can't really progress that way. Alright. Oh, you know, Sikari, the mold just becomes salt. I don't hear any ticking, I think we're good. Yeah, you can't go that far. This is what happens when your mold is actually an experiment from Big Pharma. Oh, but- You almost walked into that. <laughs> that's true, I did almost walk into that. Um, no, but I wanted to say, uh, while I'm still thinking about Vilichka, uh, if you go, you want to go on the, um, like, the pilgrimage tour, the religious tour, or whatever, uh, it, because the tourist tour doesn't show you the coolest stuff. And that's my tip from me to you. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear any ticking, so that one's not on me. I think actually it is on you. I think you've lied to me. No, they do tick. I have heard it. I do have I proof. heard fucking okay, I nothing. Have... You have no proof. I do know they tick, though. I heard absolutely nothing. I didn't either. Okay. Alright, what do we got here? Sent Friday, January 16, 2015, 1242 AM. Oh no. Sikari says, boxes don't tick on Linux specifically, probably. And also, convert in order to be shown the forbidden salt secrets. Got it. You don't have to convert, you just have to, like, choose that one when you're buying a tour. Uh, thanks to you guys, it's been about a week since my head's been clear and back to normal. And she still thinks she's got me. You guys really need to work on fixing that. Not only does she look like a little kid, but she's about as stupid as one, too. Mom and Dad are still under, though. Still totally under, though. I was wondering, is this whole family obsession something you guys programmed into her? It's kind of fucked up. It sure is. Sent Friday, November 4, 2015, 2.10 a.m. That bitch Mia is still somewhere be in between Evie La La Land and reality. She gets pretty violent, so I locked her up in a cell. I thought maybe Evelyn would get mad since Mia's her favorite and all, but she doesn't seem to care. She actually goes and visits her sometimes. She thinks Mia's her mommy. Like I said, your bio weapon is fucked up. I I correct. Yeah. Sent. Friday, September 1st, 2016, 1.10 a.m. Evelyn's family obsession is getting out of hand. She's making everyone kidnap more and more assholes off the street to add to her freak show of a family. Maybe she's getting tired of Mia not coming around, but it's a pain in the ass for me, because now I gotta clean up the mess whenever someone new comes along. By the, way, by the way, Evie's looking sick or something. 
Her skin is getting all wrinkly and she's getting gray hairs. Is that supposed to happen? It's almost like she's getting old all of a sudden. Mine now, mine now. Okay, so there is um, two ways to tell. Uh, one, yes, I'm correct. There is ticking, you just have to turn up the background volume. Oh. And two, um, at least in Ethan Must Die mode, um, there are there's an increased amount of tape on explosive boxes that might be in the base game, but they don't know. What is Ethan Must Die mode? It's kind of like in Endless mode. Oh, okay. Oh, thank god there's a safe room coming up. Yeah. Okay, Faye. Infection report. This report details the symptoms that appear when, a bac when the bacterium that grows inside of the E-Series infects a human. Be sure to read this document thoroughly before dealing with E-Series weaponized assets. Hereafter referred to as mold. Initial infection. The mold ingests nutrients from the subject's body to propagate itself and slowly takes over cells within the body. As a side effect of this, the infected subject gains remarkable regenerative abilities. During experiments, we removed arms and legs from test subjects and found that they were able to co-opt the amputated limbs in a matter of minutes. Mid-stage infection. Once the mold reaches the brain, the subject's thoughts become in tune with those of the E-series asset. The subject starts to hear things and experience hallucinations and soon comes under complete control of the E-series asset. If this state continues, the host will lose all sense of ego. Complete infection. After every cell in the body has been taken over by the mold, the subject begins to lose their human form. Physical mutations differ from case to case, but all result in him or her requiring incredible physical strength. Containing a subject at this stage would be extremely difficult. That's what happened to Jack. Yeah. And Ethan. Well. <laughs> five minutes after dose vomiting. E necrotoxin E series dosage test. Ten minutes after dose death. Twelve minutes after dose cell calcification. This is some fucked up shit. It really is. The fuck is this? E-necrotoxin. Destroys cells of any subject based on the E-series bioweapon model. Use only for disposal of E-series assets. The toxin must first be stimulated before use. Do this by placing a sample of an E-series cells into the necrotoxin container. This is where you would put Evelyn's, uh... Uh, vial. which we can get in the next room. Oh, the you vial? Have it, I think. Yeah. Right under your hand. Yes, gun. okay. And then you pick up the other one. Sorry, Evelyn. Don't apologize to Evelyn, she sucks. <laughs> She's a kid. She's not actually a kid. She's a kid! This project was instigated in 2000 as one of several concepts for the company's next bass, Next Generation Experimental Battlefield Superiority Initiative, working with technical assistance from HCF to develop a bioweapon for neutralizing combatants en masse with minimal direct contact. Next Bass was later folded, and all its assets diverted to this project. What makes this project markedly different from conventional weapons is its ability to turn enemy combatants into allies, converting hostile elements into willing servants. 
since this effectively eliminates the cost of not only POW handling, but also combat itself, it's no wonder we had the Red Acted and even Red Acted's Red Acted organization chomping at the bit to get on board. The project would never have existed were it not for the discovery in Red Acted of Red Acted, the remarkably progressed vicariant evolution fungus that we commonly term the mutamicite, mutamicite. The fabricate mutamicite. I hate. Yeah. I hate everything. <laughs> is that canon? That is canon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The fabrication yep. method for each bioweapon was to introduce the mutamicite genome to a pre-stage four human embryo and perform cultivation in a controlled environment over a period of 38 to 40 weeks. The resultant organisms were, grade, were referred to as candidate specimens and graded based on usability, from the impractical and faulty series A through D to the perfected E series. A common appearance was selected for the bioweapons, that of a roughly 10-year-old girl, to ensure ease of blending in with urban-slash-refugee populations. Tell that to the Cadeau in Resident Evil 8. What? Uh, that, uh, Series E was perfected. The first E-Series specimen, named Evelyn, has proven capable of secreting the mutamycete from her tissue as- red-acted from her tissue at will. It is also of note that Evelyn's mutamycete imposes a profound control over body and mind when introduced into a host organism. We still have a lot to learn about the mechanism by which Evelyn- achieves and maintains this control, but the working theory is that the vector is similar to the auto-inducer pheromones used for quorum sensing and pseudom... Pseudomonas? bacteria. Evelyn's control is exerted in a series of discrete stages, the first of which is hallucination. Almost immediately after infection, the subject begins to see Im images of Evelyn, though she is not in fact there and even hear her voice, which is inaudible to everyone else. Auditions with infected subjects throughout the stages of infection reveal that at first, the phantom Evelyn appears to be a normal young girl, sometimes desiring companionship or assistance. As time progresses, she begins making more and more extreme demands, including self-mutilation and attacks on other people. The psychological shock this induces helps to break down the mind's natural barriers to Evelyn's brainwashing effect, and by the time mental control is achieved, the mutamycete infection has progressed through the body's cells, so the body redacted. That comes to a head next game, but we'll get there when we get there. Will we get there? Yeah. Evelyn's functions also include the ability to form organisms from mycelia, the fungal filaments. The term organism is used loosely here. Strictly speaking, they are superorganisms formed of countless mycelia. What's important, though, is that they exhibit a strong survival instinct and will defend themselves ferociously with the slightest provocation. Their fungal toughness and remarkable strength gives them, give them significant battlefield potential. The researchers have been calling these superorganisms the molded, made of mold and also molded as in shape. The name has a certain elegance to it. It does. I'm not yeah. going to deny that. For the treatment of accidental infections, performing redacted on samples of Evelyn's body tissue produces a unique fungicidal, fungicidal serum. Administ administering the serum to an infected subject will cause the mycelia to calcify, but if the subject's cells are already largely invaded, the serum will be fatal. Since the treatment window is so small, the serum's primary use is therefore disposal of infected subjects, rather than a cure. In exploring the serum's potential, we found that subjecting it to red acted would enhance its effects to extreme potency, becoming a, po po becoming a compound we now call e-necrotoxin, which red acted even in tiny amounts. What's been interesting to observe in Evelyn's behavior is her obsession with the concept of family. In experiments, we found on multiple occasions that infected subjects were compelled to act as her mother or father, treating her as if she were really their daughter. Why did she settle upon family as the theme for her mental control? This is just speculation, 
but it could be that she instinctively understands that a family unit is better suited to blending into social groups than a lone girl. Or she's a kid! <laughs> On the other hand, well, a sentimental sort might suggest that she's making up for a perceived lack of love in her quarantined upbringing. A parent's love. I guess I'm a sentimental sort, so sue me. <laughs> Save room. I love a save room. Flame rounds. Love when we also get free grenades. Neuro rounds. What the fuck is a neuro round? Uh, they do increase damage to the molded. Me. Okay. Uh. What can we put away? What is that between your shells and herbs? This? Uh, no. Uh, on the this? Box. Yes, steroids. Oh, you can use your steroids. It'll heal you and increase your health. <sighs> Yay! Hooray, we're drugged up! Love wins. Alright. Um, other than that, I think we essentially need everything we have. Um, All right. You're not using... You have machine gun ammo, and you're not using your machine gun, so you can put that... Uh, away. where's the machine gun ammo? Where it says 120. Aha. Oh my god. Hooray, we can no longer participate in the Olympics. Well, Ethan's dead, so... Do you think death is disqualifying from the Olympics? Like, is that in the rules? Um... Good question. Uh, I don't imagine someone who is dead would be allowed to participate. I mean, like, to be clear, to be clear, I'm not asking about a weekend at Bernie's type thing. I'm asking if zombies were real, would they be automatically disqualified from being in the Olympics? I guess when death could be considered a disability, in which case I guess they could get into the Special Olympics. I want to read this book. <laughs> Oh, this was a- this is where we were, wait. Uh, no, this isn't where we were. Hang on. Yeah, no, this is progress. I'm not very smart. That is something we cannot use. Yet or at all? Uh, I don't remember if we can actually go through there. I know it's relevant to Chris's story. We can't use it because it's not relevant to our journey. Yeah. Remote bomb. <laughs> Tunnel time. Tunnel time. Boy, more water. There will be molded in there. Okay, so what's the strat here? Uh, the same strat it's always been rip and tear until it's done.
Yeah, I'm a big fan of the humming. It's very good at setting the mood. I might be misremembering. I swear there was molded in the water. You might have been on a harder mode. Maybe. I tend to play Resident Evil on. Hi, Evelyn. Die. Uh, shit, which way are they coming from? Uh, in front of you. Okay. Uh, this is the double bloater. Uh, the what? So you're going to be fighting two of the big guys at the same time? Which big guys? The ones that like to throw up at you. Oh, those guys. Uh, when I get to this area, I just use use up every single remote bomb I have. I don't remember how to use the remote bombs. Uh, you place them and then your alt-fire button makes them explode. Which I think it's click to place, right click to detonate. Okay. So do I like? I don't. I don't remember how they work. <laughs> you would place them in an area that they would walk, and then when they're like around it, you would right click to detonate it. Or you could just go hog wild with the shotgun and grenade launcher, your call. Am I gonna regret that? I mean, you do have the final boss that you might want to save your grena grenade rounds for, but, I mean, it's ultimately your call. Shotgun's not particularly useful against the final boss. Oh, you know what? Um, so this is the point where you can just kind of run and get away from them. I'm thinking ahead a little. Your two big guys are miles ahead at this point. Coda. Listen, this arena looks very similar to the one where you fight the big guys. Bye. Shit. Yeah, you can just uh. kind of you can just kind of run. Do I keep running? Yeah. You can keep running, you can save by it's your call. Well now I can pass you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh, shit. Let me in, let me in, let me in. <laughs> the this is the this is the arena. All right. Honestly, you don't even really have to fight them as long as they don't throw up while you're climbing the ladder. You're fine. That ladder back there. Yeah. All right, let's go for it. Okay, you might have to fight them. Great. 
Oh, I walked directly into it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Good juice. Get by the pillar if you can. I forgot they had such a long range. Yeah, they're like the only ranged enemy in the game. Super rounds might also help. Listen, I just... I didn't mean the shotgun. You press G to switch ammo types on your handgun. I couldn't remember the keybind, so I improvised. <laughs> Valid. I thought you could interrupt them and just stagger them. Okay, one's dead. And they're both dead. So you can clean up the arena if you want and get a mosey on. Hell yeah. Alright. Um, I think it'd be sound effects. Oh, it's already maxed. <laughs> Incredible. That's okay. not great. You have the handgun ammo, honestly, that you can afford to shoot them. Space. I do want that though. Uh, you can get rid of the chem fluid by making a goop juice. I can make a goop juice. Okay, I know we can pick that up. Uh, I don't, need, don't that. need that. I think there was one other box. Yeah, I think I saw one. By the ladder. That's just more machine gun. You're good. Cool. This time, they, it's actually on purpose that it's getting all blue. It's not Rupert. It's not Rupert. Uh, I think you can vault up the... The way up is supposed to be here. Bluepert. Uh, is there like a, another path? What's our map say? Oh. I'm not very smart. It's okay. Oh, wait, uh, no. It is over there. It's We just missed a wall. Right oh. there. There we go. That's easy to miss, yeah. Boxes. Boxes. You got both of them. Machine gun ammo, strong first aid med. Mine map. Now that we're done in the mines. Hmm. What are you gonna do?
You can really tell that we're heading towards the final boss. Yeah. That was our last save point. It gave us two strong first aid meds. Yeah. <laughs> hydrate or dihydrate. Hydrate or dihydrate. Gatorade. This looks like um, Samantha American Girl doll. Huh. It's the Eevee representative. Because guess where we are? Guess where we are? Um, the map says we are in a storeroom. We're back at the we're back at the house. We're back in the fucking building. <laughs> All right. I'm sure of it. It's not here. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And up doors open. First E series robot. We hallucinated a door into opening. Also, Mushroom Ellion agrees with me that it does look like Samantha, American Girl doll. <laughs> That was more my sister's thing when she was, like, real young. Uh, like most neurodivergent people, uh, she lost interest in it. I was never a dolls person, I was a stuffed animals person. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, we're back in the fucking building again. It was worth a try. Yeah. <laughs> you never get to see Ethan's face. Hi, Evelyn. This is your fault. Why am I seeing this? We literally just learned why we're seeing this. Yeah. It's because you're dead, Ethan. Ethan, it's okay. It's okay, it's me. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. Kill him, Mommy. Oh, but you shouldn't have done that! It fucking hurts! Does it want to be my daddy? Then he can die. I mean, did, did, did you ask? Now it's mommy's <laughs> turn to kill you. Ethan, you're tripping balls on mold spores. We are tripping balls on mold spores. Where are we supposed to go? Up the stairs. Also, I guess I technically lied when I said that was our last uh, safe spot, because, oh, never mind, it was. Uh, the safe spot's not here. Like, Evelyn, you could have asked. I would have happily ad adopted a fungal daughter. <laughs> Which way? Uh, I don't know if we can actually go through that door, but this way. Uh, well, now uh, I want to try the door. Okay. I hope you're up to stuff on you your blocking. Oh me. god. 
That's blocking, right? Yeah. Huh. Sikari says, I would have happily adopted a fungal daughter is a quintessentially moth sentence. Yeah, I buy that. I'm not up to snuff on my blocking. Koda, I'm gonna die. I think you'll be alright. Mm, I think I'm gonna die. I think you'll be alright. I think I'm gonna die. I think you'll be alright. Wait, something's supposed to be happening right now. Huh. Oh god. Uh, can we go back downstairs? Oh, never mind. You can't take damage here, you're fine. Okay. Leave me to die. This is a hallucination. Go back home. We're right. supposed to be seeing Evelyn here now. I feel like Where something. Where are you? Uh, can we go back downstairs? We can try. Uh, maybe there's a couple more hallucinations we need to see first. Okay, she ran that way, so yeah, I think we do gotta go that way first. Which way? To the left. Uh, into the kitchen. Turn around. And that left, left of the stairs. <laughs> then down this hallway. They're gonna be one of us. And then maybe you'll play nice. Evelyn, please let I'm me adopt not you. Playing. No! Get that away from me! We can try this door. Uh, I think we triggered the thing we needed to. Like, she may be a bioweapon, but also, she is a scared and lonely kid. Um... <laughs> Now you should be able to go upstairs and actually get what we need to do. Sikari says the problem we hadn't reached our tripping balls quota. Yeah. That sounds true. Oh yeah. We we triggered what we needed. To do. It's ready that big explosion move, you'll need the block. Because now you're at a point where you can take damage. Okay. It has reminded me. Okay, now what? Uh, just sprint up towards her. Alright. It'll give you a prompt or it will trigger a cutscene or something. No! No, no, no! You. 
Evelyn was granny all along. I knew this. Now it's time for one of Resident Evil's favorite tropes, a giant wall of flesh. <laughs> Love a wall of flesh. What do I do with the wall of flesh? Shoot it until it dies. Oh, okay. Wait until the base emerges. There you go. go Alright. Uh, just, like, with, with the handgun, or do I want to use the... I would say probably start with your grenade launcher. Alright, yeah, that's what I thought. I'll try it early. Press it. You have a neuro round. I forgot. How do I do the neuro round? Press G. On? Your keyboard, J uh, while it's while you have your grenade launcher. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Never mind. Too late. No, you you, you finished the first phase of the fight. Oh, okay. Get, get up, get up. and then this happened. I just wanted a bad name. I know, Evie, I'm sorry. Alberto One. What the heck is an Alberto One? A special one. time for Don't worry, she's not dead. Yes. Because Get ending video, one, complete the game on easy. Sonic. did it. We saved the world, I think. 
Mm -hmm. We did something. Hi, Mia. Yeah. You made it. I'm glad. Did I? Oh god, ad break, ad break. Oh no! I'm <laughs> sorry, everyone. <laughs> door closed tonight and what a long night it was but not just for me me and I weren't the only victims here so were the bakers it was that thing Evelyn don't talk about her like that <laughs> umbrella and these guys are here to clean up the mess I had just come to terms with losing me and now she's back and wants to start over. Put all this behind us. Maybe this is where the next door opens. Yippee! Yay! Oh, and the reason I said hi, Sonic, is because Chris Redfield is voiced by Roger Craig Smith, who is the current voice actor of Sonic. Oh, neat. He also voiced Batman in Captain America. Go tell and Go tell and Go tell and Well, see, it's funny that you say don't even worry about Resident Evil 8, because, uh... Are you starting it? Next. I'm gonna be doing it with you, yeah. Similar I'm excited. to this, whenever we have time. A prisoner with no parole They locked me up and took my soul Spaghetti, just like my favorite I video want... game protagonist, but you know, spaghetti. I want to acknowledge real quick yeah. uh, that you have not been crackly this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it only took us until the last one. Before we do Resident Evil 8, though, I need to get the DLC because, um, it does have a proper closure in the DLC. How much is the DLC? Uh, the DLC for Village. One sec, let me go check. November, October, please. Winter's Expansion, which is, um, End of Rose, is $15 right now. Alright. Um, and no, Go Tell Aunt Rody is an English folk song of 19th century American language origin. Of American origin, sorry. Thank you, Wikipedia. It has a round folk song index number of 3346. <laughs> uh... Googling it shows a, a Burr Lives version, so. The first two, like, video results are Burr Lives Go Tell Aunt Rody and Go Tell Aunt Rody RE7 official soundtrack full. Village is really two years old already? Wow. It's 
crazy. Yeah, Resident Evil 7 is a time. It's revived this franchise, essentially. Yeah, I heard. Resident Evil 6 was such a flop in terms of what the fans thought that it damn near killed the franchise. And then this Marvel comes out. Which is funny because Resident Evil 6, to my knowledge, was a good game, just not a good Resident Evil game. Oh yeah, like how there's Hellraiser movies that are really good horror movies, but they're terrible Hellraiser movies. Mm -hmm. Like, this should not have been in the franchise, but you can't really call it a bad movie, because it's not a bad movie. It's just a bad Hellraiser yeah. movie. The franchise started to fall off with 5, but 5 was quite literally just Resident Evil 4, but more. And also kinda bad. I should go back to playing Resident Evil 1. Um, I think I have got more, like, experience with the... Like, camera angles and controls thing it has going on that I could probably manage it. I will not be streaming that. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to, like, get the rest of the series and do a uh, Resident Evil marathon at some point. Now that sounds fun. Obviously only doing the remakes, because the original PlayStation ones are uh, kind of bad, TM. I think that I should play more, like, really old games. Valid. BRB gonna stream Pong. <laughs> Can't believe it. We're going way back. We're going way back. Man, I should play Fatal Frame. I really want to play Fatal Frame. I'll need to see if I can get it running on this machine. Fatal Frame is a franchise. I've heard really good things about it. No, I have too. I'm just particular with my brand of horror. Like Resident Evil, I don't see them as horror games, even though they're intended to be horror games. They're... too action-y, really, to be pure horror. The first three games were pretty horror, except maybe three was a little bit action, two action. Yeah. Uh, four is when it kind of became this action. Yeah, like sense. they're they're trying to strike a balance, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. I think this yeah. was a very is good it... horror game. Oh, this was absolutely a good horror game. Uh, but I think that when they fail, it's in the direction of being too action. Yeah. Which is funny because 4 is the best in the series. That's because you're an action person and not a horror person. See, that's not necessarily true. Like, 4 is pretty unanimously agreed upon to be the best in the series. I'm teasing you. Uh, if not, yeah. If not, 2 or 7. And this is because the original version of 4 had such a good balance between action and horror. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never heard this song. Yeah, this I can I can turn down the music if needed. Hang on. Let me just 
All right, there, now it's quieter. Um. Issa says, to be honest, I think the only non-Stardew in Minecraft game I've played is Lily, which I don't know how good the Steam version is. I only played the OG version that no longer exists. Are you sure it no longer exists? I've never heard of this game, but there's like a pretty good chance that it's archived somewhere. Did you know that like every Flash game is archived? Uh, everyone check out Flashpoint. I miss the days of Flash. Check out Flashpoint. I'm bullying you. I'm bullying you, get Flashpoint. Also, this is a PSA uh, that you have to go digging a little for it because they couldn't release it like directly, but you can play original Pop Tropica in Flashpoint. Um, which is a thing that has made me very happy. Uh, uh, I've looked a lot. It used to be a mobile game, which is gone. I've been looking. That, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, there, there's some mobile games that I've been trying to find that function, and unfortunately, a lot of them just don't anymore. Uh, send me a like, list. I can take a look. Honestly, the only one that I really care about, apparent. Well, okay, that's a lie. Apparently, there was a No More Heroes mobile game, but that's besides the point. Um, there was a mobile version of Devil May Cry Three and Devil May Cry Four. Hmm. And I did find one for four, but the APK doesn't work on my phone because it's too advanced. Ha have you heard that there? We'll talk about this after stream. Hmm. But yeah, no, this this was a good game. I very, I very much enjoyed this game. I'm going to go play it again at some point to try and wrap up the achievements that I missed. I think there's a DLC. I don't know if I have the DLC. There's probably achievements in the DLC. I will bug Coda about playing it with me if so. There are two DLCs that are important. One of them is free, and that's the Chris story. Okay. Oh. Um, and then there's the other one, End of Zoe, which I think is somewhere between five to ten bucks. All right. Oh yeah, there's also card games with Lucas. That it's God. not canon though, unfortunately. Well, I don't care if it's canon. I'm gonna play it. That sounds fun. I mean, valid. <laughs> it, it it's twenty one, is what you're doing in that. Lily is fun. It's about a botany student who is collecting rare flowers on this island inhabited by wooden constructs with souls of dead people in them. What? That sounds fucking awesome. I'm writing this down. That does sound awesome. Oh, we were just shy of 12 hours. Damn. Uh, we missed nine Mr. Everywheres, which is fair. I never remember where they all are. And four antique coins. And two files. That's pretty good, honestly. Yeah, more than I got on my first playthrough. Unlocked difficulty Madhouse weapon Albert OR1. Cool. Madhouse difficulty shuffles almost everything, and Jack will never die. Terrible. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to be playing on Madhouse. I'm going to be ending this stream because so I would like to um, go do some other things now. I'll play it on Madhouse eventually. I'll make that my next uh, redeem challenge. There we go. Hell yeah. Alright, let me see if anyone's live. And... no. All right, I'm just going to release you guys into the wild. Uh, try not to take over any ecosystems too bad. Bye, I love you. <laughs> Bye, everybody.